Hello, well, here's what's left of John Talley with Partzilla.com. I've spent the last four days actually working at the distribution center, the main distribution center, and working second shift, and good gosh almighty, do I have a new respect for all the people that work in that building. I'm tired, I am sore, and guess what? I've still got to keep going because we're going from Sunday to Sunday. I go in at four o'clock, I come out at 2 a.m., and this is what it looks like. I know it's not pretty, so bear with me, be gentle. I'm still here. I'm going to get your questions answered the best I can. So just start sending them in, and uh, we'll start plowing our way through it. And if you've got parts ordered from us, I promise I'm working as hard as I can. <laughs> All right, Hunter is sending me a question. Hey, I have a 2006 Honda Rancher 350, one of my favorite machines, actually owned in 03. I just put a new top in because it was smoking pretty bad, and about a week uh, back, uh, about a week later, it started again, and I don't know what's wrong with it. When you said you did the top end, did you just do the piston and rings, and uh, did you take a look at your valves, see if there was any slop in the valve guides, and did you check your valve seals? And you said it pretty much started smoking again almost immediately. I really want you to go ahead and answer those couple of questions. And he also say, I haven't been hard on it because I, I'm still breaking it in. Well, that was going to bring me to my next question. We actually did a video of how to break in a, a top end or an engine rebuild. And my theory is, is that you run it, you know, the first cycle, you just want to heat cycle it, not running it too hard. After that, you go, I'll, I'll go ahead and hammer it. And that way those rings get heated up, you get a lot of compression built up, and they start expanding out, cutting into the, uh, the walls, and the walls cutting into them. It's kind of a transfer of metal that goes on, and that's what creates that seal. So I would, uh, I would be curious if that process has actually happened. Also, if you did do um, just piston and rings, are you sure that you went in and gapped your rings appropriately? Because if you did not, then the rings don't have enough room to expand and contract, and they actually push, e put, uh, push into each other, and that causes them to rare, uh, wear prematurely. So a couple of things um, that you may want to look at if you have to go back into it and things didn't go as planned. But um, at this point, before I went to pull it apart, Go ahead and take it and well, change your oil first again to get most of that wear that's broken down in the oil. Get that out of there. Change your oil and just go run it again and run it pretty hard. I mean, come on, what do you have to lose at this point? And I definitely want to know what happens next, so get back with us and give us some more information because we'll get you through this. All right. Do, 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 do. Oh, okay. I have another, there's another 350 question, uh, D and J. I have a 2001 Honda Rancher 350 uh, ES. I'm redoing the top end, and I can't get the wrist pin out of the piston. What should I do? Well, there, there's a couple of different companies that actually make wrist pin pullers. My guess is uh, yours really got hot to the point. It's, it's actually seized up inside of that piston. That's why it doesn't want to, it doesn't want to pull through. So I can't recall um, a couple of uh, the model numbers of the different um, rim, pissed rim pullers that are out there. But give us a little while, we'll mark your question, I'll look up one that I like, and then we'll send you a link to it. And you're welcome, trumpet. Uh, trumpet. All right, what Tyler wants to know, what premix ratio should I use for breaking in a rebuilt two-stroke engine? Boy, y'all been busy this last month building a bunch of engines, haven't you? That's why we've been so busy over at the distribution center. Um, you use your regular, I prefer to use the uh, regular premix ratio plus just a tick more, but don't get carried away because you actually want it to the piston to cut into the rings and the rings cut into the piston and if you oversaturate uh, that with a uh, two-stroke oil it is it, it's, uh, it's not that process is not going to happen so use your regular pre-mix plus maybe a half ounce I mean that's just it uh, on five gallons <clears throat> all right well, what else do we have here hey Cliff you're saying uh, about the 450 and you have to remind me what all we were talking about on the 450 and which one. <laughs> it's, it's been a really, really um, 
long week for me. <laughs> so I, I have failed in as far as really doing the research, but I will not give up. But uh, after this path or this coming up Sunday, I will be back on whatever I consider a normal routine, and uh, I'll dive back into it. All right, Jennifer is asking me, hey, Partzilla, I have an 06 YFZ450 that keeps shutting off. Hmm. Not sure if it's the fan or the, of the radiator. How do I diagnose this problem? When you say it's, sh it's shutting off, are you talking about just the fan shutting off or is the actual engine shutting off? So, uh, Jennifer, if you uh, get that question, uh, get that back to me, uh, I'll put some thought into it. All right, Hunter's asking me, I just got a new jug, pistons and rings, and I haven't checked my valve guides, and I changed my oil, but my buddy said it might be something in my head, so I'm probably going to buy a new head. Well, shoot, at that point, you've eliminated all your possibilities. Before you do that, just make sure there isn't too much play on the valve and the valve guides. It may be cheaper just to go ahead and either A, replace the valves, or replace the valves and have the new guides um, pressed in if they're available. Plus, the simplest things, just check the seals up top, man. If those things are worn out, it's going to pull or push um, oil you know, straight past them, and that could be your problem. <clears throat> All right, Hunter said, yes, I did check the gap on my rings. Well, as I said earlier, just go ahead and go ahead and run it. Change roll again and go ahead and run it. See if we can get those to seat in. And if if the if what the if the piston is rings, they did what they were supposed to do and they're they're set now. Then we need to take a look at the uh, the valve valve guides and valve seals. Lightning has asked me. I suspect the. Uh, Oh, okay, that's, hi, John, I'm working on a 1981 NX50, boy, an old one, I think that was a two-stroke, wasn't it? This model is equipped with an automatic choke control box. After sitting for years, I have it up and running, but it turns off when it's hot. Well, you, you may be right. I suspect the control box is faulty because it does not run once hot. Do you have any experience bypassing the box? Even as old as I am, I haven't, I haven't run into that one yet. Um, I would hazard to guess that um, if you could eliminate the control box and just manually adjust the choke on it, because you're basically just closing off the plate where it forces more fuel to come in than air. Um, let me see if I can actually look at the uh, the, the drawing or the um, exploded parts diagrams to see if that's even, what I'm talking about e is even possible. So guys, if you would mark the uh, Lightning Motorsports one and uh, I'll take a peek at that. Um, two wheeled toe is asking me, hey John, how important is the 15,000 mile valve service on the 2007 GSXR 1000? I have 19,000 and they sound the same. Your ears may not be able to pick up on what changes may have happened because the valves going in and or going out of adjustment happens over a long period of time. I mean, 15,000 miles, that's a, that's a pretty good distance to cover. So they may be out of whack and you're just not hearing it because you're used to hearing your machine the way it sounds right now. At 15K, I would definitely go in there and at least check them. And they may be fine, but at least you want to go in there and make sure. All right, Joe is asking me about some parts he ordered on the 25th and 26th. Um, if you would send in a, uh, uh, a private message, uh, one of the guys will contact you, and, uh, he, and all he will need is your order number, and then he can look in to see what the manufacturer uh, delay will be, and we'll get back with you. It may take us a little while, but we, we will get back to you. All right, Keith is asking me, I replaced the stator on a 2012 Polaris Ranger 500 EFI 4x4. I did the AC test on the stator while running, and like your video shows, it shows 9.8 volts on all phases. 
uh, that's that's way too low. Um, I don't recall the exact number, but you should be north of 25 volts AC. I've seen them run, in, depending on the RPM and the uh, the stator winding count. I've had them run in in between 25 volts AC up to you know 55 or 60 on a, a really high demand system. The Ranger 500s it should be in that 25 uh, to 30 volt range. So I would say your your stator is having an issue at this point because 9.8 volts, I mean, whew, uh, that's, that's not going to get it done. <clears throat> All right, Hunter's asked me another question. Uh, another question, I want to be a four-wheeler mechanic. Do you, uh, do, you, do you know where I could learn more about this kind of stuff? Uh, well, the, actually, there's a couple of different companies. Um, one of the biggest ones is called MMI, Motorcycle Mechanics Institute. I mean, they have a very intense course. I think it's uh, in between nine months and a year to go through their curriculum. But if that is not what you want to do, because it, it does cost a substantial amount to go through that program, is sign on with a dealership. And if they have a well-seasoned mechanic working there that's, uh, that's willing to work with you as a, you know, a tutelage or a student, I mean, that's, that's how I learned. And I enjoy passing on my knowledge to other people. So, but we're out there. You just have to find us. I mean, who knows? May end up making videos one day for Partzilla. So, yeah, get busy. I can't do this stuff forever. <clears throat> hmm. I'm going to have to look at the uh, exploded parts diagrams on this one. Uh, Trumpet Rush is asking me, hey, John, I just replaced the rear brake pads on my 99 Polaris Sportsman 335 and noticed there wasn't a spacer in between the dual piston pads. Is this critical? I'm trying to come up with what spacer you're talking about, uh, or if you're talking about the spring that usually keeps tension on the bottom of the brake pads. If if it's not there and it shows on the exploded uh, diagrams, well, my rule of thumb is it needs to be there. So go ahead and put one back in. Uh, somebody may have uh, previous, uh, previously done the work on it and the spacer fell out or they, it was damaged. Who knows? But Polaris designed it and they had it in there for a reason. So my answer would be yes, go ahead and replace it. Could I grind off the tops of the old pads to use as the spacer? I can't imagine that a spacer is going to cost that much. And as long as it's still available, go ahead and order one and you know, pop what should go in there. All right, Carl is asking me, or hey, mate, are you still able to get Honda Rune parts? Uh, are you seeing a problem? Not that I'm aware of. Um, just give us a call if you're not seeing or if you're unable to find the particular part that you're looking for. And then uh, if that's the case, we can do a, a quick query into you know, the Honda site and take a peek to make sure that those, uh, those parts that you're looking for aren't in LA, no longer available. So uh, give us a little bit more information, and we'll see if we can guide you, uh, guide you to the answer. <laughs> yeah, Partzilla's already, uh, already respond, responding to you. Yeah, um, <clears throat> our, mo our monitor is paying attention, so if you would uh, instant message him the particular parts that you're looking for, and we'll see if, uh, if they are, in fact, um, available. Mr. Shelton, uh, thank you, and thank you for watching. How are things going up in Tennessee? <laughs> All right, Caden's asking me. I really enjoy your engine build uh, videos you guys make. Very helpful. Do you have any tips on removing gaskets, what to use, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, um, <clears throat> actually, I do. Uh, my weapon of choice, especially for removing those green Honda gaskets, which works so well, is to coat it down with uh, just regular brake cleaner. Um, we, I go through cases of this stuff. And then either use a scraper, or sometimes I use a, a razor blade. But you have to be very cap careful when you're doing either, because if you go in at the wrong angle, you can actually cut into the metal, believe it or not. Because right? we're talking about aluminum here, and that's pretty easily scarred up. And the last thing you want to do is create a, a cut in it or an indention. 
And then that develops a leak when you've already put your cases or whatever back together. But the, the biggest trick is to spray on that uh, brake cleaner, let it soak in, and that'll help break down the fibers and the glue, and it makes it a little bit easier or tolerable to actually uh, remove the gasket. All right, Colby's asking me, I just rebuilt my top end on my razor, and I'm burning about a half or a quarter of a quart per tank of gas, any ideas? Whew. Question number one, is it actually smoking? Okay, that, that would uh, give me an indication as to whether or not your rings may have um, actually seeded or not. And good grief, a quarter quart, I mean, that's, that's, that's more than it should be doing. Um, is it leaking anywhere? I mean, is it possible that, uh, as we just mentioned earlier, that one of your gaskets didn't seal up properly? depending on uh, how far you had to go into the engine. I mean, uh, I assume you just did the top end. So go to the usual, usual suspects. I mean, go look at it and make sure that it's not wet on the, uh, the outside of the engine somewhere, especially around your, uh, your head gasket and your base gasket in particular. Uh, here he's asked me, how do you replace the starter on a VTX 800? 1800 Ooh, I think I do remember having to do this and boy that is that is a tough machine to uh, get that done on it's been a while but I believe you actually have to drop out um, that gun, it's been so long it's, there's a canister that I recall that, that was in the way that you have to drop it out and it actually comes out through the bottom of the uh, the frame if I remember correctly um, it's been a while, let me take a peek, go reference back to uh, the, the manual, and then I'll get you answered for, get that answer for you. But I do remember it being a big pain in the butt. Just make very sure you disconnect your battery before you get started on anything like this, because chances are you're gonna arc it against something. Okay, this is different, but it's something I can relate to. Robert's asking me, Hey John, last Friday I fell off a CRF450, that's a machine, and fractured both of my legs and I want to know if you ever fell off before and how did you recover mentally. I, I've fallen more than I really want to um, talk about, but one of, my, <laughs> one of my worst ones was a, uh, a race up in North Carolina. I decided I was going to be able to clear a set of doubles that only the 80s or 250s could do, 80s because they're light, 250s because they have more power, and of course I was on a 125. Well sailed through the air, looked down, realized I'm not gonna make this. So I cased the other side and flipped off the bike. That wasn't the problem. The problem was uh, I got back up to get my bike and then I heard the sound of a two-stroke uh, coming after me and I looked up and there's another bike and it squashed me like a melon. So I didn't remember anything for about two or three days. But long story short, I really didn't feel like riding after some, you know, going through that kind of trauma. But what I did do is I went back to that same track when there was nobody there and just practiced slowly and then brought my speed back up. And then I started bringing in other friends to ride with where I got used to other people being around me. And basically I had to relearn or regrow my fortitude for being on a racetrack. So my advice is to do it methodically and slowly and you know incrementally. Don't just go back out there um, and jump back into the fray, unless you think you can handle it, but you would not have sent this question to me if that was the case. And I hope you heal up well and do what the doctors tell you so you'll have a chance of walking normally and give your, your legs a chance to really repair themselves. And the good part is, um, now that you've fractured them, they're gonna be stronger than they were beforehand, believe it or not. I've got a few broken things too, so yeah, know all about it. <laughs> Although, um, Happily retired from that. They say with age comes the cage. I'm good with that. <laughs> uh, AJ has asked me, a pop on D-cell is lean jetting, correct? Can you tell if you're fat on the top of the RPM? I would think it's the other way around, isn't it? Um, you, when you pop on uh, D-cell, that means you're getting too much fuel, and so that would mean you're rich condition. Um, that's typically what I see the as being the case. So I would say uh, lean it out and do a 
look at your spark plug range. Oh, you had another part of that question. How can you tell if you are fat at the top end of the RPM range? Well, that's what I do. I go old school on taking plug readings. So what you would do is go ahead and run your machine at that high RPM. If you can keep it there for 30 seconds to a minute, great. And then what they do, uh, do a dry cut. Cut the machine off and let it just coast, coast to a, uh, a stop. That way the plug is going to tell you what's going on at that particular RPM because you're not sending it in any more fuel or ignition. So it should take a snapshot of what's going on and then do a plug read. And uh, that should let you know. <clears throat> Uh, scroll down a little bit. Hunters ask me uh, at what what uh, what is some good maintenance for my 06 Rancher 350? Man, that's some popular today because I go trail riding and mud riding. What should I check when I get back after riding each time? Well, first and foremost, uh, your air filter. I mean, uh, uh, that is the number one thing to look at. And basically, after every single weekend when I go out riding, um, that, that has to get changed. And depending on how many miles, I mean, sometimes I'll do a uh, oil change after every single weekend because we run our machines pretty hard. And in my opinion, you know, oil is cheap, a lot cheaper than rebuilding an engine. So why not keep it as fresh as you can? Um, on the 350, especially if you're in the mud a pretty good bit, you need to keep an eye on your your rear brake, that housing that's going around your brakes. After time, that O-ring will start to break down, if not, and as well as that seal which your axle goes through. It's raining, so sorry about that. Um, and if oil gets in there, it makes a mess out of your brakes. So, and if oil, if, water no, not oil if water gets in there it makes a mess out of your brakes so if you want to take that off every so often you just take a peek in there to see if there's anything you need to do or clean out or if uh, that outer seal or the uh, the, uh, the o-ring has, has to be replaced hmm Randoms ask me, do we have a 300cc bore kit for a Honda Tiger? A Tiger? I'm not familiar with that model. Um, do you have the exact model number? Because that's, uh, that's unusual. <laughs> I, I don't think I've heard of that one. Uh, Eric is asking about international um, shipping. Uh, we've had to uh, um, turn it off for the time being because Nothing, nothing that we could do about it. We couldn't actually get part uh, our orders actually out of the United States, and different countries had different policies in place as far as you know their, them accepting packages, and it was just becoming a huge mess with everything stacking up. So we just decided to turn it off for right now. But believe me, as soon as this stuff dies back down and we get back to our new normal, we'll, we'll, we'll continue shipping uh, internationally. Hey, Gareth, are you joining us again? Good to see you. Uh, I'm doing well, just very sore at the moment <laughs> and tired. But I'm halfway through. Uh, I'll be able to finish up this Sunday. Man, it must be a, a week for Honda top end smoking. 508 Mika is asking me, my 400EX, one of my favorite machines, is smoking pretty badly. And the top end was done recently, uh, not too long ago. I uh, basically would give you the same uh, advice that I was talking to a previous person about their 350. Are you sure that you gapped your, your rings correctly and did you break them in? Um, my theory is, or the way I break them in is I run it kind of soft for the first heat cycle, which is usually five to 10 minutes. After that, I go ahead and put the coals to it for about 30, 45 minutes, maybe an hour, and then let it cool down. At that point, they should be seated in. If you did that and it's still, uh, it's still smoking, uh, I would be suspect of the ring, or not the rings, but the valves, valve guides, or more than likely the seals, uh, uh, the valve seals. They're cheap, but they can be a bit, uh, it's a bit of a pain in the butt to get to them because you will have to pull the head in order to push in the spring and, uh, and get them replaced. Now I have seen the, a tool from Motion Pro, and I actually have it, but I'm, I haven't used it yet. 
and it's designed to where if you can um, pressurize the uh, the cylinder like you're doing a, uh, a leak down test and that forces your valves up and you take this tool and you pop the uh, the top and it gets the keepers out then you spin the tool around with the new keepers in there after you've replaced your seal and you pop them back in I've been dying to use it I may bring in a machine and change out a set of seals uh, just to see how well it works but hey if motion pro makes it chances are it'll work uh, they make some pretty good stuff all right Chris has asked me can you do a Honda TRX 400EX steering stem video sure why not all right um, development team let's look into get another 400EX I mean that was one of the first machines we did way back and it sounds like we need to bring another one in and do some more stuff to it what are your thoughts <laughs> hello John I don't have any questions just happy to see you today today well I'm happy to be seen hope you're doing well <laughs> All right, uh, Bill is asking me, uh, I have a 2009 Goldwing and I get a wine from the alternator. I hear this is normal. Is that true? I would think any type of, if yours sounds just like another Goldwing sitting next to you, okay, that's fine. But um, I would say no. A wine usually indicates a bearing going out. So that's just something that you probably don't have to address right now, but eventually, if that if it is a bearing it's gonna it's gonna fail and uh, fail dramatically so you may want to go ahead and get ahead of that problem and get uh, get it replaced all right I have a Vulcan Vaquero 1700 uh, 1700 I'm looking for a power commander and an auto tune your thoughts please I don't believe they have an auto tune for that particular one but um, the power commander should make one for the Vicaro 1700. Let our parts guys take a peek at it, peek at it, and then um, we'll get the uh, the part number over to you. And if there, wow, <laughs> and uh, if there is one available to you, we'll look up the part numbers and get it over to you. And certainly, you can order that through uh, through us. So. All right, guys. Well, that may be my my cue to go ahead and exit stage left, <laughs> go ahead and grab my raincoat because the studio is actually in a, uh, uh, a different building from the one I have to go work in. So all these parts orders, I think I've spent enough time here talking to y'all. I need to go get busy over there. Well, listen, if you have ordered from us, we are cranking them out as fast as we can get and uh, or fast as we can, and we're going to get it all done. And we appreciate y'all swinging through and spending a little time with us. It's fun to interact with uh, our customers and fans. And uh, it, it, we enjoy what we do. And um, we're going to help you to get out there and enjoy what you do. And that, and that is, uh, of course, writing. Well, once again, we just want to say thank you. And we will see you next Friday. Although I may be uh, doing this from a different location. So you'll have to tune in to see if we actually decide to do this um, the secret trip that I'm taking next weekend. But not really a secret. I'll share it with you later. But at any rate, I just want to say thanks again. Thanks for shopping with us. And we will see you uh, hopefully um, next, uh, next Friday. Until then, y'all be safe. God bless. Have a great day.